And so by unanimous decision when it came down to these two at the finals, you guys chose with a majority vote, Sentinel Prime over Skylinks? Don't worry buddy, next time, next time. Alright, here it is. You guys voted for it, so I'm giving it to you. This is Transformers Studio Series number 61, Voyager Class Sentinel Prime. So before we take a look at the action figure, let's put him aside for a moment and take a look at the packaging. As per take of every single video review on this channel, up close in your face. So here you have some lovely artwork of Sentinel Prime right in front of the packaging. 61 of Studio Series, like I mentioned, Sentinel Prime, Decepticon logo, even though he's really an Autobot, but from what he does in the film, I can understand why they went Decepticon route with him. Ages 4 and Plus, Hasbro's logo, Transformers, oh, also Transformers Dark the Moon, where this character's from, and it all leads up to the Misaligned Generations logo at the top right corner. Next to that, we got Takara Tomy. Taking a look on this side of the packaging, we got Sentinel Prime wielding his dual-bladed sword into combat against the Autobots, I guess. Above that, we've got the open window packaging for the Autobot logo, which sticks out for the Studio Series. And then down below all that, we've got the Authentic Transformers logo, which to remind you, if it doesn't say Authentic, it's a knockoff. On this side of the packaging, we've got Sentinel Prime up close in your face again from the Studio Series, number 61, Voyager Class. And taking a look at the back of the packaging, forgive the glare, but uh, we've got the Rosenberg fire truck mode with his robot mode and 32 steps of transversing. The backdrop that this figure comes with is the Battle of Chicago. And here's a look at the backdrop, but we'll get more into detail about it at the end of the video. And here's our sad little onion face, which is very disturbed by your pick for this review. And take a look at the instructions that the figure comes with. And there go the instructions. Prime in this sad fire truck. And it looks pretty accurate to the film. I have no complaints, really. Yeah, I can nitpick about a few things, maybe like the fact that the uh, headlights aren't painted, neither are the tail lights in the back, and there could possibly be a little more of some paint application for the side work, but for what it is, it's okay. It, it gets everything that I want, and it, it really is just nitpicking that I'm doing here. I like the fact that this 316 here that's stamped on the figure is actually crooked and not straight. You can kind of see how it's kind of angling up when it gets to around here. And on this side here, it's uh, it's a little straight, just a little. It's, it's also got that crooky problem, but it's, it's not as bad as the upper side. But um, yeah, that's something to point out that, you know, there's going to be some imperfections with the paint application. Well, what do you expect? I mean, it's just a uh, $30 action figure. I mean, it's not like that's much. It is, but it, it, it. Anyway, uh, we do have the Rosenberg logo on both sides right here where this white stripe is and it's actually painted up in silver. So unless you shine it in the light or kind of take it away from the light, you uh, really aren't going to see it that well. Well, it actually comes out better on camera than it does in person. I mean, if you actually look at this in person, it's not there. On the camera, it, it picks up really nice. Huh. And the same can be said on this side as well. I mean, it's the same thing. I, yeah, I mean, I, I cannot see this in person right now. This is hilarious. I cannot see it right now in person, but on camera, it's actually picking it up. It's incredible. But for the most part, outside of the imprinted sloppiness to the 316 on both sides, the paint job for what is offered on this guy really is pretty nice. It doesn't seem to be too sloppy, so I'll give it that. In this mode, the fire truck does roll around as it should. These wheels are not pinned. They are actually those ones that are tapped into place. You can actually remove them if you want, but you might want to run the risk of breaking the clip, so I wouldn't do that. There's a little bit of some articulation for the fire hose. Why do I say fire hose? I meant water hose, so it does actually articulate up and down. But well, it doesn't actually rotate at all, which is unfortunate. I don't know how they couldn't find a way to make that happen, but whatever. At least it does peg in, so if you don't want it moving all around, it's, it's got that option. You can also flip it up and tab it in back here if you want a cleaner look from the front. That's an option as well, but that's also due to transformation. And that's about it. Now one other thing that I do have to mention about this is that 
Some people are unfortunately not able to get a complete set. I mean, I've seen some reviewers already on this guy who happens to be missing a side view mirror, either it's the left or the right. But I seem to be very lucky in that department as my figure came with both. And uh, these are actually supposed to be removable because they're just these little peg pieces that pop in here. But on my release, these are so tight, I cannot get these to budge at all. So let's do some side comparisons to get this portion of the video out of the way. So I'm going to bring in one of the figures that was in the poll that did not get many votes. And that is Scavenger, our latest leader class transformer figure from the studio series. And one of the very last few Constructicons that we need to complete Devastator, right? So as you can see, it's a pretty big figure and he should be because he's a leader class and this is a Voyager class and the scale between one another really isn't that bad even though this should actually be just a little more bigger maybe about up to here there you go there and that. so let's go ahead and get to the transformation because that's what you guys really want to see because this figure is truly complex it's fun in its own rights but really it can be troublesome at first few times so what first thing we're going to do is go ahead and tap this into place here and we'll be done with that let's go ahead and remove these side panels down here which are actually going to become the dual bladed sword pieces for Sentinel Prime where you can just peg them in together via these handle pieces and there you go. And we'll put that to the side. Go ahead and swing down the side view mirrors. Those are in place. Come to the back and open up this entire panel section just like that. And that's going to give us our legs and we'll go ahead and start here. So the first thing I like to do is just go ahead and untab the front portion of his legs like this and then rotate this entire piece like so. Come back here and bring that panel in, tab it in, and then we'll swing up this panel here with the awkward looking ladder and that's going to tab in right here on this side. Once that's all in place, we can swing this back down and tab that back into place and swing out the foot and there we have a leg. And go ahead and repeat the same process on this side by swinging up this entire leg section and swing this all around tab this into place and then we'll take this normal looking ladder and we will tab that into place on the side of his leg then once that's done we'll tab back in the front portion and swing up the foot and here we have sentinel prime's legs completed which if you leave it like this we've got a bit of a girl walk so to continue the transformation on the guy what we're going to do now is we're going to untab his hands because they peg in right here at the bottom portion of the roof. And once that's done, then we can actually untab these side panel pieces here by splitting the arm section and then swinging all this out like so. Once that's done, we will swing down the entire backpack section or his wing section, as I should say. So that way we can get under here with our fingernails and pop open the roof section and swing this entire piece down and take the roof and swing it beyond where it's supposed to go like that. And there's a reason why and I'll show you in just a bit. Once completed, we will swing the entire upper torso section around. Once we have enough clearance, there we go. And that way we have clearance now to flip out Sentinel Prime's head like so. Bring this up so you can actually see this. And once we got his chest piece all lined up here, we can take these tabs here and we can tab them into slots around his collar like so. And we'll do the same thing on this side here. And here we have his real chest due to transformation. But also we have the faux section which is going to complete the look. So we'll go ahead and take this tab and we'll put it in that slot right there. And it's easier said than done because this is actually the hardest part to connect on the guy. Well, that was actually easy. Maybe it's this one here. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing on this side here. Which, again, like I said, easier said than done. It's really hard. There we go. With a little force, then we can swing down these panels and lock them into place. And there's the actual screen accurate chest section, which is the faux chest on the guy. Because again, he's already got one underneath. Next thing we need to do is grab the upper torso and lock it into the crotch section. Feel like that. 
and go ahead and apply a little force here to keep that crotch section locked into place so it doesn't move around. Next, we're gonna take the roof and there's a tab right there that's gonna go into that slot right there, which is why we had to apply some force and push it all the way back as possible because it's the only way it will actually go in to this section here. When that's done, all we need to do now is just open up his backpack or his cape, whichever one you wanna say. So that way we got clearance to take this tab right here and slot it into that hole right there, just like that. And the rest of this is actually just rearranging some stuff. So we'll swing down the arms and we'll swing up his shoulder pads and readjust everything to your liking. And that's pretty so much it. So here we have Transformer Studio Series Voyager Class Sentinel Prime in his robot mode. Magnificent. Is it perfect? No, it's not. It's still got complications due to the fact that it is a transforming action figure. If this was a model kit, maybe a statue, there would be no need for all these extra hinges and such, but as it is, it's got to transform, so it works for me. And Sentinel Prime is no exception when it comes to detail. He's got loads of it. It's crazy. So much going on here. This figure is magnificent in every way, from its paintwork to its actual sculpting. It is a masterpiece in its own right, even if it is pretty small and a lot cheaper than a masterpiece figure. And the real draw on this figure is that head sculpt. It's magnificent. Look at the way that this came out. We've got a fully sculpted beard on the figure, so it does actually droop all the way down past his chin. And you would think that this would be a very fragile piece at that, but it is not. This is actually done out of some very sturdy plastic here, so it can take a beating from left and right when it hits up against the collar piece. The figure also has some nice painted blue eyes, and as you can see, he does have a bit of a stern look, which gives this figure some nice dimension and profile. There's a good look at his chest section, which is actually asymmetrical from one another because via this little wire piece here. There's a good look at his shoulder armor, which is actually very pointy and it can be very dangerous if you're not careful. Here's a good look at the forearm section. This looks incredible and it's very nicely painted. No sloppiness again. And there's one bit of the transformation that I forgot to do, but a lot of reviewers do this. Actually, there's some side pieces that come out around the hip section. You gotta get your fingernails in there to pull them out though. I mean, there are some tabs here, but if you're not careful with the way you actually force these, when you get your fingers around, you could untab the top section of Sentinel Prime from the lower section and it, it's just annoying. But once that's done, then you have the complete transformation on Sentinel Prime. Here's a good look at the details of his legs, which once again, nice paintwork, very glossy paint job, love it. Here's a look at the back of the figure where you can see some kibble, but it really is hidden up pretty well on all sides. And even the backpack on the figure really isn't that far out. I mean, that actually looks pretty clean compared to other Studio Series figures that we've got including our new Shatter figure. So right, let's go through articulation. He does have a ball joint at the head, which is kind of restricted with the way it can actually move. You get a little bit of some up and down and a little bit of some attitude, a little left and right, but it is hindered because of the sculpting. We do have a hinge joint at the shoulder armor where it gets out of the way for the rest of the articulation, which is on a swivel there. And we've got our hinge for inward and outward movement. There's an upper elbow swivel section to make up with the fact that there is no bicep cut. It does have single jointed elbows that does get more than nine degrees of bend. There's rotation at the wrist, though it's pretty tight on my figure. The figure does actually sport a swivel cut around the waist section, but due to the fact that this entire piece has to tab into the top, it keeps it all locked in place. If you were to untap it, you get access to this area. So moving right along, the hip section is on swivels. You get that much kicking forward and that much going back because of restrictions. But you do get a full JCVD split, so there's your still quality people. We do have a swivel cut that makes up for the five section down here, right next to the knees. And the knees are single jointed and you get nine degrees of bend. The last portion of articulation is a hinge joint for up and down movement at the feet. There's no ankle rocker movement, no heel support, not really. So Sentinel Prime may not be the most posable out of the studio series that we've got to this day, but he is really close to his actual model design from the film and probably one of the greatest representations out of the studio series when it comes to any of the figures that we have so far. So let's go ahead and give Sentinel Prime his sword. So the only way to actually do it is to separate the two pieces and slide one from the top and one from the bottom. 
like so. This is actually a tighter fit, but it can be done. And there we go. There's Sentinel Prime with his dual-bladed sword of murder death, which looks really cool on the guy. But I am a little bummed out that we didn't have enough room in the package for the shield. That would have been nice if the figure actually came with one. But I'm sure a third party will come in to save the day. So we're going to go ahead and do a size comparison with Optimus Prime. Which looks really good as Optimus Prime should be a lot shorter than Sentinel Prime. Which makes sense. And since he is a Prime, he does have your standard... Windows must become the chest section for any prime. And I'll move these two over just so we can get one more comparison. And of course, who else am I going to show the guy off with except for the one that he murdered in the film? So here you have Studio Series Sentinel Prime with Optimus Prime and there's Ironhide. Hey you two, come on now, don't start it here. And now for the last thing that we need to showcase with the figures review, and that is, of course, the backdrop that every Studio Series figure comes with. I'm just going to get it out of the box here and set it up for you guys. So this is, what, our second or maybe third take into the Battle of Chicago backdrop for the Studio Series line, and basically it's just a destroyed city with a bunch of ruins and probably maybe some robot bits here and there if you look around and really this is actually the graveyard for both sentinel prime and megatron when you think about it so let's go ahead and put sentinel prime on here and bring this into the center here so you can get a real good look at it oh excuse me and for what can be addressed here sentinel prime does look good on this but i've also tested this in his vehicle form and it does not fit on this stand piece these are still too small for the figures in their vehicle forms but robot mode they seem to take the cake but since i really don't collect these things anyway i usually just throw them out with the packaging it's all about the figures not about the car and so there you have my spotlight review on the transformers studio series number 61 voyager class sentinel prime from transformers dark of the moon your opinions are your own, and I will respect them as much as you will respect mine. This is a great figure that you need to add to your Studio Series collection. Buy them if you see them. So questions or comments, you know what to do. Hit it down below in the comment section of the video. If you liked today's video review, hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to give me a sub up. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. Don't forget to throw in the towel. And until next time, my friends, this is your unprofessional toy reviewer, Res Power Sign Off, saying thank you very much for watching this, and I will see you whenever you see me.